We often hear about how the Dark Ages were an intellectually backward time that resulted from the dominance of Christianity in the medieval period. Supposedly, religious faith contributed to the rise of superstition and a lack of scientific advancements during this time. Innovation was hampered, scientists were persecuted. Even today, the term Dark Ages is often used to conjure images of ignorance and stupidity. The period of time in question is a 900-year span of European history between the 5th and 14th centuries AD. Carl Sagan once called it a millennium gap, a poignant lost opportunity for the human species. Critics who fault Christianity for being intellectually backward often ask, how much more advanced would we be if Christianity hadn't suppressed free thought and scientific inquiry and interfered with the progress of technological development? This remains a popular question among secularists and critics of the Christian faith, but it involves one of the most pernicious myths we hear on a regular basis. We often hear that people in the Middle Ages were all unwashed, ignorant, illiterate, plague-ridden peasants who believed that the earth was flat. Virtually all historians today agree that this is a gross mischaracterization that doesn't account for significant developments in art, science, and philosophy. Ralph Rako says, The stereotype of the Middle Ages as the Dark Ages, fostered by Renaissance humanists and Enlightenment philosophes, has, of course, long since been abandoned by scholars. John Blair, Stephen Rippon, and Christopher Smart say the days when archaeologists and historians referred to the 5th to the 10th centuries as the Dark Ages are long gone, and the material culture produced during that period demonstrates a high degree of sophistication. Finally, Seb Falk says, Recent research has exploded almost every myth about the scientific stagnation of the Middle Ages. Historians have shown it to be a period of impressive innovation and ingenuity. So where did the myth of the Dark Ages come from? The author best known for the idea that the medieval period in Europe was dark was the 14th century Italian poet Petrarch. The problem is that his critique seems to have been fairly specific. He was referring to the quality of literature of his period, not the general level of education of Europe during the Middle Ages. Another criticism came from Caesar Baronius, who used the term saculum obscurum, or Dark Age, to refer to the 10th and 11th centuries, which were lacking in surviving historical sources. That is, historical records were deficient, according to his point of view, and that's what made things dark. The problem was compounded by Protestant reformers, who saw classical antiquity as a kind of golden age, in much the same way that Petrarch and Baronius did. But they added a little twist. They saw the Dark Ages as being dark because of the corruption within the Roman Catholic Church of their day. Secular writers during the Enlightenment in the 17th and 18th centuries then attacked the Middle Ages as a period dominated by faith and thus opposed to their own age of reason. Critics included Baruch Spinoza, Immanuel Kant, David Hume, Thomas Paine, Diderot, Voltaire, the Marquis de Sade, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and Edward Gibbon, all of whom painted the Middle Ages as regressive. It shouldn't come as a surprise that most of these writers were also anti-religious. They might have been great thinkers, but they weren't very objective. The problem here is that the concept of the Dark Ages is a myth that seems to have evolved from very specific criticisms. Only later did this terminology generally apply to the medieval period, and even then it was a gross misconception that did not reflect historical reality. During the so-called Dark Ages, there were a number of advancements that appeared. By 1000 AD, Europe had the heavy plow, the horse collar, horseshoes, and the three-field crop rotation system, all of which contributed to an explosion in agricultural productivity and therefore to population growth. This was aided by the widespread adoption of windmills and water mills, hospitals gained popularity in the Middle Ages, and the more accomplished surgeons were often churchmen. We also have the introduction of the mechanical clock, gunpowder, hourglasses, eyeglasses, and stirrups. Universities also appeared fairly early. They were connected to the Cluny reform movement in the medieval church in the 10th century, meaning that the Roman Catholic Church was directly responsible for the evolution of the modern university. James Hannum notes, the previously unknown notion of the university as a self-governing academic institution did not appear until the Middle Ages, and it can be argued that it was one of the most important advances in the history of ideas.
The first universities emerged in Europe in the medieval period, which included the University of Bologna in 1088, the University of Paris around 1150, and Oxford University in 1167. Nothing during this time rivals the invention of the printing press in 1436. It needed numerous technologies to be blended together in order to function. Created by Johannes Gutenberg, it required the manufacturing of paper and water-powered paper mills, a sufficient understanding of metallurgy needed to create a durable, movable type, the use of the screw press to ensure uniform printing, and the discovery of an oil-based ink. The final product made books accessible to the masses. Within a few short decades, tens of thousands of books had been published. By the end of the 1400s, virtually every major city in Europe had a printing press. Printing helped fuel the growth of science by fundamentally transforming how ideas were shared, debated, and advanced. So the so-called Dark Ages was far from a time of superstition and ignorance. It was actually a period when science, technology, and education not only made significant advancements, but set the stage for even more discoveries yet to come. Anyone using the term Dark Ages pejoratively to indicate that Christendom somehow held back human progress needs to read a history book. 